Welcome back to Knowledge is Kings, guys. I am Kings, and if you've just purchased the table saw, one of the first things you're gonna wanna make is a crosscut sled. Let's get to it. I'm gonna be using cabinet grade plywood. What is the difference between this and construction grade plywood? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here is cabinet grade plywood next to construction grade plywood. The construction grade plywood has three thick layers and the cabinet grade plywood has nine thin layers. The additional thinner layers allows the plywood to remain very flat, stable, and considerably stronger. When I try to bend the construction grade plywood, it wants to bend and it even starts to crack. When I try to bend the cabinet grade plywood, not only do I need to triple the force, but it still does not want to bend. It will, but for a piece that's only half inch by eight inch thick, it's amazingly strong. There is more to it as well. The construction grade plywood is made of some type of pine or fir, whereas this cabinet grade plywood is made of birch. So when you build furniture or jigs that need to be precise, use cabinet grade plywood. I will start by ripping some scrap pieces down for the back sections of the sled. Once I get three pieces, I stack them and cut them all at once at the miter saw. I did not have any more of that plywood, so I grabbed a large leftover chunk of pre-finished cabinet grade plywood. I rip a larger piece off that I will later rip into smaller pieces for the front, but I want to keep it together because I need to sand the finish off before I glue them together, and it is easier to do that while it is in one piece. Once one side is sanded, I rip it down to three equal pieces. Then I need to sand the back side of one of the pieces. Then it is time to glue up. I use this little roller glue bottle that is good for gluing wide pieces of wood like this, but it seems poorly made. This one is made and sold by Rockler and it falls apart and does not clean up very well and the roller often gets stuck. So I would not recommend this one, but they might make nicer ones that are available. Then since I need this to be very straight for it to give me accurate cuts, I clamp it to a straight level. Then I repeat the process with the front piece, and since it is taller, I use one level at the top and one level at the bottom when I clamp it together. I could not find any of my other shorter levels, so I used two six foot levels, which is very cumbersome. While those are drying, I cut another piece from the pre-finished plywood for the base of the sled. And then I need to make some wood runners that will ride in the slots of the table saw. My red oak bin had a piece that was big enough, but any hardwood would work fine for the runners. First, I need to measure the slot that the runner will ride in. I use my digital caliper for this. I raise the blade to just above the halfway point on the board so I can resaw it to the right thickness in two passes on the table saw. Resawing in two passes is a lot safer than trying to do it in one pass where the chances of kickback are higher and I would then have a substantial portion of the blade exposed, which is highly undesirable if something bad were to happen. I was attempting to make it just a bit wider and then sand it down so it was tight, but it ended up being just the right size. I drop the depth gauge of the caliper into the slot, then lift it up just a bit to get the needed thickness. I do not want to go the full depth. Having a gap will allow sawdust to go under the slide instead of building up in front of it and binding the slide. Then I just use the depth gauge to set the rip fence. Those slide nicely. I attach this to a smaller piece that will be used for a different jig. I wanted to show you how I would attach wooden slides, but I will actually be using adjustable metal slides for my crosscut sled. I move the rip fence over with the sled touching it until it's in the position I want. I mark where the slides will be on the sled just so I know where to spray my glue accelerant later. I need to put small scraps of cardboard under the slides to raise them up above the surface of the table saw. I put just a couple of dots of instant glue for a quick grab and then a few lines of wood glue for the actual holding power. Then I push the sled against the rip fence, aligning the bottom to the end of the slides and press it down for a couple seconds so the instant glue has time to grab. I pre-drill holes before screwing them in. Pre-drilling in small pieces of wood is critical, otherwise the screw will wedge its way in between the wood fibers, splitting the sides in half. Then I just use a junk chisel to remove any glue squeeze out before it hardens. I trim the excess slides on the miter saw and tested how it fits. Perfect. 
For my sled, as I said, I'm using metal slides. These have adjustable bearings with springs behind them. That way I can adjust the slide tightness. These will not be affected by changes in humidity like the wood will be. It is attached in a similar way to the wooden slides, but I will not use any wood glue, just the instant glue and screws. I use a self-centering bit to make the holes. The fit is a little tight, but smooth. If I need to, I can always loosen it a bit, but I like where it is. Once the glue has set up on the front and back sections, I use a scraper to get the dried glue off. Then I just rip a little off of each side of the table saw to make sure they have a flat and square edge. I do the same to the ends of the, at the miter saw. For the front section, I make a mark where the saw blade will cut through and then make some layout marks so I can cut excess wood away to lighten it up a bit. I need to have a taller section where the blade will go through so that when the blade cuts at full depth, it does not just cut my jig in half. Then I start making the cuts at the table saw and finish them up with a jigsaw. I round the corners over with a 3 16 radius round over bit in my palm rudder. When I did the start cuts for this on the table saw, I cut too far back on the piece, so I'm just filling it in and I'll sand it smooth. I wouldn't need to fill these gaps in, but then every time I use my crosscut sled, the gap would call to me and say, Look upon me! Look what you did! And who needs that? In the back section, I need to put a groove in it to accept some T-track. I set up the stack dado in my table saw. If you don't have a dado set, you can take multiple passes moving the fence over a little each time to get the same result. Actually, if you only have one dado to make, that might be the fastest way. If you do have a stack dado set, it should come with small metal spacers to get exact cut widths. Once you have made a series of test cuts and found the right series spacers for the size you are going for, write that size on the spacers with permanent marker, so the next time you need to make that size cut, you will know what spacers to use. In this instance, I was grabbing all the spacers with 3 quarter inches written on them. Since I have a saw stop, I need to change the saw break itself to one that is compatible with dado blades. The portion that hits the blade is a lot wider than the regular break. Once the stack data was in, I set the height by setting my T-track next to it and adjusting the blade to it. Once the groove is there, it's time for assembly. I use a scrap piece to hold the sled flat while I screw it to the back rail. For now, I will only add two screws into this rail section. For the front rail, I need to trim the sled since I was using scrap and did not have anything longer, so I marked the length of the front rail on the sled and cut it off with my track saw. Once it was trimmed to length, I screw it into the sled with a whole bunch of screws, making sure not to put the screws where the blade will cut through. I do not glue either the front or the back piece, just in case I need to swap them out in the future. Then I set the sled on the table saw and raise the blade into the sled slowly and make a cut all the way across. Then it's time to square the back rail that I only put two screws into. I will be using the five cut method to square it up. I take a scrap piece of plywood and mark my starting position. I make a cut and it does not matter how much I cut as long as the blade cuts the entire length of the wood. Then I rotate the piece clockwise 90 degrees. I then repeat that four more times the same way, except on the last cut, I need to cut a piece about an inch wide. The width does not really matter, but I try to estimate an inch. Then as I cut through my markings, I relabeled A and B. Now I need to take a series of measurements, mark them down, and then it's time for the math. I need to measure side A, then side B. Then I need to find the length of the cut piece. And for the last measurement, I need to find the distance between the screw centers from the back bottom of the sled.
First, I subtract B from A to get 1 8 inch. Then I divide that number by 4, the number of sides that I cut. This number tells me how far I am out of square in the length of my cut piece. So I take that number and divide it by the length of my cut piece. That is how far I am out of square per inch. Then I multiply that number by the distance between the screws. This is how far I am out of square in the distance between my screws. It is important that I do the next step at the center of the screw that holds this side of the rail. I will use feeler gauges stacked to the .072 measurement and use it as a spacer in between the fence and a block. Then I clamp the block in place and remove the feeler gauges. Or in my case, let the feeler gauges fall to the floor. Then I will remove the old screw, pre-drill a new hole away from the old one, and insert a new screw. It is time for me to make another set of test cuts. So when I did that, the result was twice as bad, which means I moved the fence the wrong way. So I moved the fence backward twice as much as I had moved it forward, and the result was dead on when I did test cuts. So if your pivot screw is on the right side of the sled, and the number you get when you did all the math is positive, move the rail away from the saw. And if it is negative, move it toward the saw blade. Once it is square, put more screws in the bottom to hold everything square. To cut the T-track, I just cut very slowly on my miter saw. Then I use instant glue to hold it in place and then add screws later. I leave a sizable gap between the two tracks because I do not want to take a chance that my blade will hit it as this would activate the saw's brake system. I use a metal file just to round over the corner of the track to match the round over I made in the wood. This is what I'm using for a stop lock. There are other stop locks out there actually made for this purpose, but they are pretty expensive for what you get. This is a very cheap alternative. Also, I could have made my own out of wood, but I love the rigidity of this one. Then I just run a scrap piece through just to test everything, and I get perfectly sized pieces. Now to add some safety blocks. It is very easy when you get in a rhythm of cutting to forget that the blade comes out of the backside of the sled. So I add these blocks as a reminder not to put my fingers here. I just shoot them on with a cordless pin nailer. And with that, it is complete. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button as it really helps the channel and subscribe so you can be entered into our giveaway. Details are in the description and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, I like that.